Good evening. It's Sunday night, December the 6th, and we're continuing on our Advent study at Ormokta Baptist Church. We are going to be looking tonight at Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, as we explore a study laid out for us called Unexpected Jesus, printed by Anna Robbins, who is the president of Acadia Divinity College. Before we start in our scripture reading and our study, uh, let's begin with prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Father God, on this day, on the Lord's Day, we take time to reflect on the gift that you have given to us. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be always a grateful people, to always recognize that we were given a gift that we did not deserve, and that the gift of your presence, the gift of your son, the gift of your sonship and daughterhood is a gift from you. And we thank you, God, that you, in your mercy, chose to give this to us, your image bearers, not because of our work, but because of your love. Help us to find our identity in that tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our scripture tonight is from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Here's what God's Word says. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Crenarius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he had belonged to the house of the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room available for them. Amen. I think we all know that beautiful Christmas story. If not, I'm glad you've listened in tonight. Here's what uh, the focus is this evening. In the Christmas season, we might grow a little weary of the sentimentality we sometimes encounter in our churches and other venues. Lovely as they are, beyond the children's nativity play is a faith that can make a difference in people's lives, especially in the harsh reality of the darkest nights and the anguished days. As we properly examine the nativity story, we discover a slightly different picture of the first Christmas. It's different than what we normally encounter on our Christmas cards. To begin with, the word often translated as in, as we see in the King James, is more accurately translated as the guest room, as we see in the NIV. We can be confident from archaeology that in a typical first century home in Palestine, there would be a main living quarters, the sleeping quarters, and then the storeroom with space for animals. Because of this census, the guest room of the house of Joseph's relatives was occupied. But the family may have cleared out space normally occupied by the animals and allowed Mary and Joseph to stay there. God made flesh came into the world not in a quiet, rustic barn, but in the midst of a bustling home in a, in a heaving town. Right at the center of human reality and the daily struggles of life, Jesus is born, God with us. In the middle of the chaos, the mess, the laughter, the noise, the complexity, God is here. Even though it's likely Jesus was born in a family home rather than in a wooden stable, let's not imagine a nice bungalow with a middle-class neighborhood. Living standards in ancient Palestine were not quite uh, like the comparatively palatial comforts that we have come to enjoy. We can't really imagine what it was like for a very young woman without education and little experience of life to give birth without her own family nearby and without medical support. She and her baby would soon be on the run and the blood of innocent children would cover the land. None of this is reflected in the nativity set on my mantelpiece. God has always noticed the overlooked. He is never influenced by worldly prejudices, but he has always been with the weak and the poor, lifting them up by reminding them that he is with them. 
God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. We see that in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27. Many people have given up waiting for a Messiah. They were comfortable in their lives, and they did not want to be disturbed. Those who were looking for him expected a king, a military ruler, a religious leader, a person of wealth and of power, someone who would take their side and give them a political advantage. They didn't expect this. A baby in a manger, in a family home, in a town crowded with busy people. If we think that Jesus is not relevant to our lives, it's very easy to miss him at Christmas. The question for us this Advent is not perhaps that of the nativity play innkeeper. Will we make room for Jesus? The question is, as he shows up in our busy and distracted lives, will we notice him at all? We're encouraged to also, for those that would like to go and continue to read from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 through 31. And here are some questions for reflection. What do you think we can so easily miss? Why do you think we can so easily miss Jesus in our midst at Christmas time? Where do you see God at work today? Let's close in prayer. Lord God, help me to notice Jesus in the busyness, in the worry, in the celebrations, in the conflicts. I want to notice him at work around me. Help me to notice. Help me to notice. Amen.